I'm Flowers from Flower of England and um, welcome today to our second episode of In Conversation. Very excited to have the amazing Faye Whiteley here today with us to talk about her incredible company called Bee Vibe. Um, the reason that I've invited Faye is because we're getting closer to Earth Day and Faye's incredible company, which she's going to explain a bit more about, has got a lot of sustainable values and a huge importance around our planet. Welcome, Faye. Thank you. I am buzzing, excuse the pun, <laughs> intended to be here. Thank you. Oh, well, you're very welcome. Um, I'd love to hear a bit more about your business and why you set it up in the first place. Yeah, I'd love to tell you more. So Be Vibe was ultimately created, what we call inspired by a spontaneous encounter with a bee um, in 2018. Me and my partner were out on a walk and we came across this, this struggling bumblebee. And we couldn't help but want to want to like inter- intervene and try and help her. So my partner rolled up his sleeves and we carried her along to try and find a flower. And unfortunately, couldn't find any flowers, which we'll talk about <laughs> later on, you know. Um, and um, his grandma said one time, you know, without some sugar water I could help revive it. So we found this this cafe and the lady was lovely. She, I mean, at first she was a bit like, oh, what do you mean you want some sugar water? But we all kind of gathered outside and um, put a couple of drops of solution beside the bee. And before we knew it, she was like sipping, sipping it up and she had a little wiggle and then off she flew. And it was just such a lovely moment. And like for anyone that's ever saved a bee before, you know just how yeah, how great it feels. You feel like a bit of a hero and you thought, oh, that what, you know, what would happen if we didn't? So we were jumped in the car on our way home and my partner started to look for, you know, did something exist, maybe like a sugar water that we could carry around with us. Um, and it didn't. So yeah, we sat down and we created um, our flagship products, which we now call the Bee Revival Kit, which is a, just one sat beside you there. So it's a key ring. And one. Yeah, this one, and it contains a small bottle of bee food syrup. So if you find a Thai bee in need and you can't find any flowers nearby, then you can offer a drop um, you know, of solution beside the bee, and hopefully it'll be yeah, the boost it needs to carry on its journey. And yeah, we we started it essentially this product kicked bee vibe off, and um, but really also as a tool for conversation. So, you know, for us to talk about, yeah, people to see it on your keys and be like, what's that? Oh, and, you know, why do we need to save the bees? And this this huge, yeah, so although it's all of our products have a solution to them, they're also a great conversation piece. So, yes. Fantastic, beautiful. I love all the designs as well. Thank you. Really aesthetically pleasing. Thank you. you kind of led really nicely onto my next question. Yes. Why is it so important that we save the bees and oh. keep them revived and buzzing around? It's it's so important for so many reasons. Um, I go to a lot of schools. I teach a lot of children about bees. And we always come back to this idea of biodiversity. So the yes. fact that they're really great pollinators. So there are so many other insects, but bees are really good at it. Um, and so our plants flowers trees all rely on pollination from insects specifically bees um so they're a really important part of our biodiversity they're also part of the food web so they are food for other animals and they're part of really important part of that chain um but the one that everyone seems to know most about is obviously their role in providing food for us Mm -hmm. so bees provide around well they pollinate around one third of all the food we eat yeah so like you know your strawberries and your blueberries avocados um chocolate coffee like there's so many amazing food groups that rely on um bee and insect pollination so without them it would be a really sad world and also they deserve you know they that's their world too so we deserve to they deserve for us to look after them Mm -hmm. so yeah i think i read um on your website a really important fact that if you take three mouthfuls, one of those will be made from food from bees. Yes, yes, that's correct. Mm. Yeah, so like your plate, imagine that loss. Um, and actually, in fact, if we didn't, if bees weren't around to help pollinate, 
the, we just, us as humans couldn't do it efficiently enough. And in some places in Japan, uh, in built up city areas, we, they now do it with paintbrushes and it's, you know, really? it's crazy to see the process. And actually what it does is it rises the price of that food and then it's not available to everybody. So you're t- eventually like there's, there's a fact that flies around out there that isn't, that, you know, doesn't have a real true source, but it's said that without bees would probably be extinct within three years. But I think that that's quite far fetched, but actually yeah. the, that is kind of the reality that we'd be heading towards. So, and imagine like a world without the buzz of bees, like yeah. they're just so great to have around. Like it would be such a sad, yeah, so sad for us. And they're beautiful, aren't they? Sad yeah. Bees. They're really beautiful too. Well, that's, that's really interesting to know. So it, what would be really also lovely to talk about today is how we can what we can do um, as founders to educate consumers on conscious consumerism. Yeah. So I'd love to know what you're doing at B5 to do that. And I'll also talk to you a little bit about what we're doing at Flower of England. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And also that's a big part of it is sharing our knowledge. Like we don't know it all, especially when we first start off. So sharing collaborating and communicating messages together which is you know conversations like this are really important and um, obviously when we were creating our products we wanted to have the most the the most positive impact on the planet at the same time because obviously ultimately we were, we're looking to save the bees so from the how and where we source our materials to how they're assembled the packaging they go on to mm-hmm. everything has to be thought about um, and also the life cycle of it, like how long is it going to last for? Is it reusable? Um, so it's a big, it's a big journey. I mean, one of the main things that we do is the fact that we our product is reusable, it's refillable, and we provide instructions for that on our website. We do that alongside blogs. This is a really great resource. So we're typing away every month, sharing uh, all those new learnings that we have about bees. Um, and I guess just transparency, yeah, being open yes. about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I've had many conversations before. It's it's really not about perfection. It, it's all about progress yeah, and just continuously striving to be the best for the planet and for our customers and, and like for ourselves. Like I won't sat, sit here and be really proud of what I'm able to offer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but please, please share also. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it goes along the same lines that yeah. you're talking about and it's lovely to have you here today with us to just even have conversations around sustainability and what your product does for the planet. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, think that's the great thing about Earth Day in particular, because it brings it to the forefront of conversation and that's really important and it makes other businesses I hopefully inspires other businesses to sort of join and see see where they can be sustainable and what practices they can do as well. Um, at Flower of England, um, we've been on a sustainability journey for quite some time. Um, we're 23 years in business and we've probably been on this journey for, I would say, the last eight years. Um, yeah. Like, we're not perfect. We're not saying that, but it's progress. So yes, absolutely. We're, tr- we're trying to always improve, do things better. Um, we launched a collection called Kindly, um, which is made 33 miles away from our studio in Bristol. And I know that you manufacture locally as well. Don't yeah, you? so all of our products are assembled in house and where possible sourced from the UK. Because, like you say, lat, you know, travel miles are actually a really important yeah. part of product production. Um, and also, contributing to your local community is really important. So, yeah. Yeah, locally um, manufactured product is um, something that we're very proud that we've been able to do with our Kindly collection. It's made um, 33 miles away in a factory in South Wales, who I've worked with for a really long time since I launched my business. Um, This lace is from Europe. It's from Italy. And it's actually got made with some recycled yarn. And then if you treat it properly in the right way, it actually biodegrades. Um, So we're really, really pleased with this collection. It's only available at Fair of England. It's completely exclusive. But so it's it's made really ethically with a low carbon footprint. 
All the elastics are made from recycled yarn as well. And the end of life product is that it's biodegradable too, if treated in the right way. And you can find further information about that on our website. Faye, I'd love to hear a little bit more from you about um, your career journey. And I know that you had another career before you started Vive. I'd love to hear what, how you made the change. What was it that you, why you knew you had to go to Beehive and what you were doing before? Yeah. So interestingly enough, my career before was in fashion design, which is why I was immediately attracted to Flora of England uh, to appreciate uh, the beauty of, of designing clothes. And I just, I was obsessed with clothing from a very young age and I always dreamt of being a fashion designer. Um, when I got to university, I learned a lot about the fashion industry um, and the impact that the fashion industry was having on, on the environment. Mm-hmm. I grew up in North Devon, and so I spent a lot of my like younger years outside um, camping and surfing. And I just, the thought of the fashion industry having that impact did make me feel at slight ease. And so I actually did my final dissertation in can fashion be sustainable which is a huge question to answer um and I um, found out some really interesting things number one really about slowing down fashion and investing into your pieces in your wardrobe and I then went on to work for various fashion brands for about six years after my career absolutely loved it during that time, I did actually set up two of my own businesses, and one of them was Be Vive. And then during the pandemic, I lost my job in fashion design and decided to just go two feet in with Be Vive. And that was really where my passion was kind of leading me. So, uh, yeah, I went in and about eight months into it, employed our first team member. Eight months later, went into our first studio, and that's where we are today. So, Amazing! Congratulations, and I know as a business you're you're growing quite fast as the moment at the moment. Something that we've talked about before. Yeah, yeah. Um, it'd be really lovely for you to um, share with everybody which companies you're currently working with. Yeah, so I am very proud to work with some of the companies or and charities organisations I do now. It would have been it was a dream five years ago, and some of those include uh, the Worldwide Fund for Nature. The, mostly known as the WWF. Yeah, that's so been a dream collaboration. Um, we work with the Natural History Museum, the Wildlife Trusts, Kew Gardens, and most recently on the High Street at John Lewis. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. What a huge achievement. Yeah, and I think what's most exciting about it is just knowing how many people were able to reach and to get them excited about bees and also ways in which they can save them. Uh, we get quite often, and I love this, emails from people who have saved a bee and they're already a bee enthusiast, but also those who might not have been before and have got gifted one of our key rings. And they're like, well, one I had this morning um, from a young man saying that, you know, he got this key ring, he was unsure about whether he'd be able to use it or not, but he carried it around with him anyway. And then yesterday he had this amazing moment with a bumblebee where he just couldn't find any flowers nearby. And he was able to, you know, offer the bee some some liquid. And after about 30 minutes of waiting, um, yeah, the bee took off again. And what a lovely moment it was. And we often get that. And then it, it leads to other action, which is also really important. And it's why we created the bamboo version of our key ring. So which comes with the bottle inside, but also wildflower seeds to plant. So, you know, we're not just concentrating on this emergency, you know, bee food syrup, but actually the long term vision of planting and creating habitats and and getting people to, you know, sign petitions to their MP and and get involved in lots of activity around Mm. conservation and wildlife. Um, And this is hopefully just like you know, uh, helping hand in the right direction for them and inspires them. Oh, that's just, it's just so lovely. It's so lovely to hear how passionate you are about your business, but also about saving bees and how much that they mean to our biosphere. And they're so important. I just talking to you, I feel like I'm, I'm learning more and more and it's the whole education piece as well, isn't it? Around it. Yeah, absolutely. And like, there's so much fun to be had with identifying different bee species I know (laughs) and I get that I'm like oh really is that but honestly it is like to to be able to like sit down and identify a bee and learn different facts about them they are just incredible and I guess I just want to pass that on 
to other people so yeah I'm glad it's working <laughs> it, it's, it is I, I love I love hearing about it and I know we had a conversation before because I've I've got a little animal that I really like yes. as well that is quite special to me I really like frogs um I've been quite obsessed with them since I was I haven't designed a frog collection yet <laughs> so why not <laughs> yeah. but when I was um a little girl I used to go around and um find frogs that at night time that were on the road and I'd go and pick them up and put them on the other side near the pond so they didn't get run over that was something we used to do as a family and I know you found me a really nice t-shirt didn't you yes that, uh, I had a frog on it that you sent it across um but no it's just lovely really lovely to hear your story and your your passion about bees it would be really lovely to hear your ideas on what people can do at home you know how can they help our biosphere have you got any ideas you know you've got such an inspiring story how how can we inspire people to do more at home and collectively to make that difference that we all desperately need to do yeah I think it's all in the word really you just said there which is this collective approach that we should have towards it and so I believe honestly if we do lots of small actions um, that together, like a lot of us doing a little, is is way better than just a small people doing doing a lot. Um, and that we can share those learnings and those discoveries of brands or products with other people. And just like I guess, act, small acts of kindness. So you talk about moving the frog, you know, out of harm's way or the bee out of harm's way. Again, you could take that approach to other things like what type of laundry detergent you use or how you recycle at home or, you know, maybe the product, the beauty products that you use. Are you asking questions to those brands and are they transparent in their packaging, for example? Mm -hmm. You know, are they talking about where they source from or where they Yes, assemble or produce their items they talk about their carbon footprint or how to you know recycle it at the end of its use and if they can't where how best else to do this mm -hmm. um and I think we also talked a little bit earlier about you know really investing in your products and looking at how long they can last you as opposed to you know this quick disposable you know fast-paced lifestyle that yeah. we're all having and like how can we just like slow down a little bit and like actually choose products that will really benefit both ourselves and the planet. And then, yeah, share them with your friends and your family because I think that's that's part of the beauty of it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's something that we really believe in at Flower of England. Yeah. One, of, one, one thing that we work on really hard is our craftsmanship pillar. Yeah. And that is coming from a slow, slow fashion mentality like all our products are carefully made, carefully sourced. So we believe that if you purchase something um, that is a, made with craftsmanship, made with love, that it has good sustainable values, the packaging is all recyclable and the properties of the product are recyclable as well. Like we have um, in our collection at the moment, we have a beautiful collection called Daisy and that's all made on recycled chawl. Um, so it is beautiful, elegant, lovely luxury, but we're weaving in these sustainable values into our product. And we believe that if you buy well as a consumer, if you invest in a product, if you're able to choose wisely um, and then they'll last longer. And that's yeah. really something that we're trying to educate more on at Flower of England and talk about more um, in terms of consumerism. Um, but also it's, it's, I think it's really, really important to share like you said, just to share your learnings and share your learnings with other businesses as well. Yeah. And I know we're both members of a fantastic um, female group called Six Degrees based in the southwest yeah. of England. Um, and that's there's a lot of sharing that happens within that business. But yeah, not um, in terms of business, it's product related businesses as well. I suppose there could be more sharing maybe in that area. I agree I think we have a long way to go and actually I think one of the barriers to that is this not wanting to be too vulnerable you know like maybe I'm doing something wrong but actually there is no right and wrong and if we are a little bit more open and talk to each other about where we're facing challenges um, it opens up oh well room for people to suggest or to innovate together and work together to find solutions to these 
specific maybe environmental challenges that we're having and it's a great place to be in like you know you know we're always should be moving forward and things are always changing and so therefore um it's you should never ever feel bad that you're not you know if you don't feel like you're doing enough you probably are one of those people that are trying Mm. yeah that's that's really really lovely to hear because I think there's a lot of um advice out there and it's about where where do you start for me as a mum the environment and our planet earth is is really important for the next generation um whether you know it's animals people and it's just trying to be in harmony together and doing what what we can and also on a personal level what I can do as a mother what I can do as a business owner it's a very small business but we can make collective small changes as a team that just all add up and 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 continue to create momentum to make a bigger change yeah and just even talking about these little changes and what we're doing in our businesses like our recycled packaging and it's all all our packaging's made from sustainable um forest and it can all be recycled and I know your packaging has the same properties but you know if we if we can help sort of share any of that information or inspire other business owners to um to embark on that journey I think it's it's exciting yeah definitely because it feels overwhelming at times it's like oh like you have to do everything you know everything but actually um you know if you break you break it down and you just celebrate one one thing at a time like I know many companies have gone on the B corporation journey And they often talk about like scrapbooking, you know, your wins or your moves where you perhaps go from, yeah, like one using one type of material to a better version of that. And just like making record of it, because otherwise it could feel like you're not really moving or like, you know, that you're not doing enough. But actually it just celebrating all the small wins are super, super important as well. I'd love to hear about your aspirations for BVI for the future and a little bit also about what we can do at home to help the lovely bees. I have many aspirations for BVI as a creative person. I have a million ideas going around all the time, but it all comes back to our mission. And that's every time I think of a new idea, I always make sure it aligns with what I wanted to achieve with BVI in the very first place which is inspiring individuals of all ages to make a positive difference. And I want to do that in like a really fun way. You know, it has to be adventurous. It has to be muddy. It has to be like getting outside and connecting people with nature, because if you don't care about it, you're not going to want to protect it. So that's getting people outside and and like spending more time outdoors with nature and around, you know, insects like bees you're not you know you are going to fall in love with them you can't not really they're fantastic and I know a lot of people have fears around them um and with our products we hope to help alleviate those those fears you know you can admire them from a distance part of that one of them would be to open up a community hub where we live in East Devon so it would be a community social area that would be rewild uh, with a cafe, a uh, somewhere to host my workshops. So at the moment, I go into organisations or schools. But what would be great is to take them out of their normal inside environment and to take them outside and immerse them in the wonderful world of wildlife and bees. Um, and also that where I could have my workshop. So still making products by hand in the UK. And that's just, yeah, one one of many. But um, yeah, there's a really great quote from one of my friends who also runs a business in the environmental industry. And they say, like, think global and act local. Mm-hmm. And I'm very much, uh, uh, we're still a very small business. So that's kind of the mindset I'm approaching at the moment. Um, but we also have new products launching. So wow. stay tuned. <laughs> Are you allowed to? Is it top secret? Top the moment? secret, uh, yeah. Okay. Just because it sounds fun. To be oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love a new product. How exciting! Well, that sounds brilliant. I love the idea of having a uh, educational work area where you can, t- especially children, yeah, you can take them to out of the classroom because I think so much learning actually happens out of the classroom as well, and actually seeing things in their environment. Um, 
Oh, that I, I can't wait to see it. I'm sure that vision will be happening quite soon. I'm sure of it. Yeah, yeah. And then in terms of like actually taking action, I um, we have Nomo May coming up, right. which is a um, a month the month of May. It's organised by a charity called Bug Life, and they basically encourage us to not mow our lawns for the entirety of May and beyond, if you so wish, um, because it's a really important time for insects to be still nesting in your garden, and also they need the nutrients from the plants around. So even if you can't, if the sun comes up and you can't stop yourself, just at least leaving a patch yeah. for them to, you know, continue doing their business. Um, and also, we also have World Bee Day on the 20th of May, which is just, I mean, it's World Bee Day every day at Bee Vive. Yes. But if everybody wants to get involved, I think it's a great opportunity like Earth Day to talk about bees, maybe share a fun fact, buy a pot of wildflower seeds. Yeah. Um, you don't have to have a massive garden area to make an impact you can do it on balconies windowsills community gardens maybe look for an allotment like share a gardening space with somebody um and and yeah join in on the socials online um so yeah that sounds really exciting really 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 inspiring thank you so much Faye thank you for joining us today I've really really enjoyed it and I've learned a huge amount so thank you thank you (laughs)